Today, I will briefly discuss three projects where my teaching and my students' learning about social media occurs through feminist practices and theories about community and technology that have been debated and refined over many years and in many places, including the feminist classroom. I will soon be discussing my courses, Learning from YouTube and Feminist Online Spaces, and I will end with a nod towards my newest socially mediated pedagogic project, FemTechNet, which is a feminist critique of the MOOC or Massive Online Open Course. Ours is called the DOC, Distributed Online Collaborative Course. First, a rather long digression or introduction about form and content. Why am I talking to you on a video on YouTube that has been placed on a blog when, at least for the people in the room at Scripps on September 26, 2012, I will also be standing in the room with you? Well, this odd gesture raises in form many of my concerns and insights about teaching and learning about and also in social networks. Namely, one, digital social networks afford me and my users connections that are not possible to those who could not otherwise be present. Of course, this is a matter of access. Two, online social networks have different affordances and strengths from lived spaces like video and captioning, which allows for later things like archiving and translation. And three, Online social networks have different liabilities than do rooms, like new formal expectations for expression that include brevity, simplicity, and entertainment, and infrastructural norms that include corporate ownership. Critically, for my talk today, which focuses upon feminist teaching online and off, I'll begin by noting that one of these differences is that long-term feminist concerns or even demands about visibility, safety, equality, and individuality are both somehow too present and yet also unimaginable when I speak to you on the internet instead of in person, which is to say that I, like many women, am hyper-visible on the internet, where I can easily produce and control my own individual voice, and yet at the same time, when online, I cannot control how you will respond. Will I be free from either your flaming or hating or perhaps even worse, your extraordinary distraction or utter disregard? And if seen, how will I guarantee that the norms of behavior that make a classroom or lecture feel controlled, respectful, or even disciplined, but also focused and serious, will hold for your experience of an interaction with my words? Here, I consider that as I easily transverse spaces, what Henry Jenkins calls convergence, what else does or does not move with me? And finally, I start by being with you online and off because it represents in form my feminist commitment to engage in self-reflexive, situated critiques of the internet that model there the kind of culture I hope it to be, a place much like a feminist classroom or even perhaps a feminist lecture on social media and social change at Scripps College. Now that I've explained this peculiar form, I want to introduce you to two points before I get to my recent experiments on online pedagogy. These you will find below me on my blog, so buy at least for here. Thanks. 